Hey YouTube, Tom itself here taking a look at Gun Game today. Game mode that's been around at least since Counter-Strike. It's a fun way to play around with a lot of different guns in a casual free-for-all game. Get a kill with each weapon in the rotation in order to win. Or get knifed or kill yourself and you're set back. I don't claim to be exceptional, you could say I'm unexceptional at this, but... Well, I have fun and I do okay for myself. Gun Game is a free-for-all game mode. If you're more used to team-based games, it might take a little getting used to. You need to know the spawns, they tend to be around the outside of the map, you need to know the traffic patterns, common camping, and meeting spots. Where you just spawned, someone else can spawn there. It's free-for-all, so that means they're an enemy. Free-for-all is a race to finish, not a game for the best KDR. The problem with dying is mostly that it just puts you out of the action. If you have to fire your unsilenced weapon to get some attention, that's okay. These ghost maps are larger, and it can be hard to find people. People tend to go for revenge kills, partly because that's just where they know someone is. And when you get a kill, turn around, there's probably someone behind you. As far as gun game goes, you want to know the weapon rotation. Being ready for the next gun, how it's going to handle, being in the right kind of position on the map, the right kind of range you need for that weapon, is really going to help speed you through the weapon rotation. Try to go where your weapon will be effective. Get in close range for the SMGs and shotguns, and then longer ranges for the light machine guns and sniper rifles, and you'll be a lot less frustrated by the random assortment of weapons. Things really start to come together. You get a nice flow and a rhythm going as you step around the map, getting one kill, and then turning another corner to have a firefight at the right range for the next weapon that you're holding. It is very satisfying to clear a sniper out of a position with a shotgun, only to have a DMR show up in your hands, and you're well placed right where his spot had been is now your spot. Be aware of what weapons most other players have, and try and avoid those situations. In Ghost, this mostly applies to the first couple weapons where it's pistol, shotgun, SMG, assault rifle. An SMG is great close range, but if everybody else in the game has pistols and shotguns, you might want to give them just a little more range. Several of the sites in Ghosts have multiple zoom modes, the thermal, VMR, and tracker sites mostly. You'll start with the higher zoom option, but you can switch down, and in some cases you really want to, especially with SMGs. Remember that going prone is a viable defense against inaccurate weapons like Akimbo pistols and shotguns. Think of it as drop reloading normally. Finally, aim to never reload. You don't want to bother having to top off your weapon because as soon as you get a kill, you're going to get another one. You won't even be given the opportunity for a double kill. Let's talk about the weapon rotation in Ghosts. It's different from Black Ops 1 and 2 in that you're given a weapon from a class, but which weapon and what attachments it has is largely random. I have not seen any attachments that change the fire mode of the guns, however, so that's one thing you don't have to worry about. The general trend is that it starts with a close range weapon and it goes further out until it just starts over. The first half of the rotation is fairly simple. Pistol, shotgun, SMG, assault rifle, LMG, DMR. SMG, assault rifle, LMG, then they throw in a launcher. Sniper rifle, SMG, assault rifle, slug, shotgun, DMR, sniper rifle, and finally they round it out with a Kimbo Magnums and a combat knife. The first difficulty is that the LMG category includes the chainsaw and the minigun, so it's very hard to know what kind of range you're going to want to be in when you hit those LMG categories. Normally this control room would be a great place for a long range LMG, but I got the minigun instead so I had to drop down and that put me in not so good a position when I finally pulled my launcher up, which happened to be the cassette. The other option is the Panzerfaust, but either way, you'll want to be in an elevated position when you get to that launcher as the 10th weapon. You want to use the splash damage by shooting someone at their feet rather than trying to impact them directly. And you certainly don't want to have to be shooting up at anyone, so go for the high ground, that just makes sense. After that though, the big issue is that you're going to have a sniper rifle in your hands and you don't want to get knifed because that'll set you back on a launcher and you'll have to get another launcher kill. So positioning yourself that you can go LMG, launcher, sniper rifle, and get yourself out of one of the hairier parts of the weapon rotation will really help get you through the games. From there, things are fairly straightforward until you get to the slug shotgun, which is what this strange reticle indicates with the little circle inside of the larger reticle. The trouble is that they're a far cry from how effective the KSG slug shotgun was in Black Ops 2, and you're often going to need multiple hits unless you land a fairly precise shot. Given the slow fire rate of some of those shotguns, I think I'd rather have a DMR for most close range combat. But after the slug shotgun, you work your way through the DMR and sniper rifle to the last two super close range weapons, the Akimbo Magnums with ACOGs, cause why not, and the combat knife. 
There are no Black Ops crossbow, but it's fairly easy to get yourself set back when you're trying to use those weapons. Especially, you're getting knifed while you're trying to knife people. All in all, Gun Game is a fun, casual, free-for-all game mode, and it does feel really good when you start stringing together a bunch of kills together with different guns. My one complaint is that the name of your weapon is only on the screen for about two seconds, and if it has multiple attachments, it won't actually tell you what they are exactly, it will just say custom. I wish they'd tell you exactly what it was and keep it on the screen on the entire time you had the weapon up. You can get some idea for what weapon you have by how it handles and the ammo count. But, well, especially extended mags can really screw with that one, can it? Anyway, it's a fun party game, and I encourage you to give it a try. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.